All right, so you probably know about the seven major planets. You know, Mars, Mercury, the Sun, the Moon, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus, I believe. Okay. These planets relate to different parts of the body, as you might know, and it relates to the personality. And this is how you can judge and understand people, cultures, religions, you know, races, etc., groups, because of how they present themselves relating to archetypes. And it's not just the seven planets. It can be the positive and negative. It can be the four elements. It can be, you know, whatever you want to use as your divination. Usually you pick a number and then you relate things to that number. But you can do it in different ways if you want to be creative. Now, to give an example, if someone has a lot of muscles, and muscles are the, uh, the kind of active, the thing in the body that allows you to do stuff to apply force and pressure using your body on reality. The muscles are related to Mars. So a person who is very muscular or uses their muscles a lot is related to Mars. And of course, people, cultures, all these things can have multiple primary archetypes. Maybe they also use their brain a lot, their nervous system, and they become very mercurial or Jupiterian as well. And if we look at religion, if you look at Christianity, who killed Christ? It was the Romans. The Romans crucified him. And the Romans represent Mars. Christianity, I wonder, would it represent Jupiter? Would it represent the sun or even Venus? Because again, there are these, you've got kind of Mars that, you know, you'd think like the aggressive, the strong, the masculine, and it's dominating this kind of weak, this religion based on your mercy and forgiveness. And, you know, essentially what are, you know, more feminine, feminine, more weak qualities. So, you know, the enemy of the, the kind of weak feminine qualities are, you know, forgiveness and such, is the masculine qualities, you know, the, the, the Roman, which is, you know, power and you know, control, control of land, you know, very masculine, very, a lot of bravado, all that kind of stuff. And you have the Greek, the ancient Greeks near them, which I think represents Jupiter, the kind of more masculine, the, the, the masculine father figure, the, the wise governor, wise, not quite ruler, but definitely part of like a, uh, maybe a councilman or something which the Romans looked up to Jupiter, you know, uh, or they've, excuse me, the Romans lo looked up to the, the ancient Greeks which so you can think mars the boy the boyish um masculine because that's what mars is you know more of a, a young teenager or a young adult looks up to jupiter who's the the parent the adult the kind of you know you'd think 30 40 maybe up to 50 years old which then finally gets into saturn and the regions that relate to Saturn, I believe, is the Germanic eras. The Germanic areas. So, Northern Europe, where Germany, to an extent, England, you know, uh, Norway. There's always this one country, I don't know which it is, that's, that's Southern, which sounds like it's Germanic. I don't remember which one, but I hope I don't say that. So Sweden going on. You know, all those kinds of, well, the, the, the Nordic people, the Northern, it relates to North Nordic. And the North is always the cold. It's where Saturn is um, because it's cold. It's constricting like lead. And you think things like Swedish death metal or Norwegian death metal. Why are these these people who look solar, you know, white skin, 
uh, platinum blonde hair, <clears throat> or more Germanic, you know, rye or wheat, you know, grain colored hair. Interesting, unique look to the Germanic people. Why are they, and also Germany are interested in machinery, factories. Uh, they've got some interesting fetishes as well. Why is it, why do they have this like big dark uh, side or big, you know, obsession with the darkness? And so I believe it's because they're more related to that saturnian -ness. Of course, being in the cold, it makes you very Saturnian. Going to the Middle East, now, what is illegal and very frowned upon and, and, and restricted in Islam, which you know, is the religion of the desert, the Middle East, it is pork. I believe it's pork. I don't know if it's just the Jews who have that. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's definitely alcohol. And also one interesting thing, I found out that music and dancing is apparently uh, illegal in like the Quran or the, the Islamic religion. I imagine nowadays, you know, they, they have music and people probably dance, not so much as other countries, but what is related to dancing, to music, to alcohol, and again, pork, the pig being related to water and earth, but more so alcohol and dancing and music is Venus. Venus is in the body, it's the ability to generate fluids. Now people who are very Venusian are the most beautiful, but there's a fine line between ugliness and beauty with the Venusian person. They wake up looking very ugly and at the end of the day they look very beautiful. Or on a bad day they might look very ugly because they look swollen and kind of disfigured and such because their body just absorbs water and, and creates lots of moisture and water. The bladder and the genitals and also potentially the kidneys um, in these people are very active. God, it was the a fertility god for you know, fertility but also for fertility of the fields and crops because it was bringing on the rain and specifically the area which is very Venusian is actually Southern America, Mexico, you know, the, the god or is it the goddess, I'm not sure, Quet, uh, Quetzalcoatl is their version of Venus, it's the green, you know, imagine gr greenery everywhere, the jungle, rivers flowing all over the jungle, it's moist, and jungle is you know, humid, moist, all this kind of stuff, it's um, very vaginal, I guess you could say, it's relating to that. Or Mars is more, you know, a dick, rigid, hard and hot, as opposed to uh, soft, moist and um, enveloping. So Mexico has this strong Venusian quality to it in, in the way that it's a very fertile, very, um, you know, a lot of water, a lot of greenery. The people are very in touch with the plants there, with the, the um, you know, the natural greenery and, and the herbs and all that kind of stuff. They're very in touch with that stuff. They're good gardeners. The Spain, the Spain, Spain basically took over part of that, your know, Southern America. That's why it's very Spanishly um, influenced. Similarly, fun fact, I believe it is for the Philippines, the people, reason why people say it's like the Mexico of Asia is because there's a lot of Spanish, um, the, Spanish the Spanish took over it for times. They had a lot of influence over there. Going on, America is very solar as well. See, the interesting thing is that you know, the Venus and the Sol and the Sun the Venus follows the sun, I believe it's something like that, where you can see Venus in like the early mornings or something. So there's a relation to it, and they're both very bright stars. So, you know, America is, is a rich land full of, you know, 
um, a lot of good resources and such. And the people are very solar-esque. They're very, you know, they love their social media. They love to be seen. They love to be heard. They love to spread their ideas and their voice to everyone and anyone who will listen. And solar people are usually, you know, they're very heart and circulation orientated. The positive is that they're usually the leaders, they usually bring, you know, they can bring people together, similar to Venusian people. The negative is that they can be very self-centered and usually these people are, you know, you think of the heart, when you center around the heart, when you're around people, you are centered around your heart. When you're away from people, you're still centered around your heart. So ultimately you are self-centered and things that happen are around you. Um, which can be good and bad, you know, in different ways. Going back to Saturn, now Saturn seeks stability. So people with the Saturnian personality will seek stability. And the bones relate to Saturn. They are the hardest, most dense physical parts in the body. So these people are always wanting, you know, material stability, work stability, routine structure, they can be very rigid, a little bit soulless in a way. Lunar people, now the moon relates specifically to like, I guess the gonads, I think, and the lymphatic system. Uh, Japan, I think, is a, real, is a very good relator to the moon. People there seem to be fairly lunar-esque, and these, usually these people are very introverted. Uh, they are very psychic, they dream very strongly, very imaginative. They can be a bit uh, in their feelings and emotions, a um, bit pushover sometimes. They can be like a mirror where they, 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 they hold others' energy and they reflect it sometimes. And a man who is very lunar-esque looks more feminine and he's got a moon face or a potato face. And maybe he's got like a chubby body and a woman similarly also has that moon face and you know, he's going to be more chubby. You know, a woman who's Martian is going to be more muscular and, and like thinner, less fat. A man who's Martian is going to be more muscular. Again, same thing. Saturnian people have very prominent bones. They can be kind of squarish and they sometimes they're tall as well. So they look like thick bones, tall, but sometimes small. Mercurial people, the Indian region and race is relating to Mercury. Asia in general is very mercurial. You'll notice that the, if you look at some of who they worshiped, the most respected person in the community was a kind of genderless person almost where they were a mercurial figure where they weren't really this or that they weren't in reality or they weren't in the imaginary realms or the magical realms they were kind of in between everything it's a very strong representation of balance but it's on like an interesting maybe more intellectual tinge if you look at India, they love Mercury. They've touched it all throughout their lifetimes, essentially, and it's made them very intelligent and very you know, nervous system based. Of course, the IQ of India, it, it goes up and down, it varies. You can find regions which apparently are very high and some regions which are low. Um, but it makes them very good at, you know, any kind of task that requires travel, uh, delivery, you know, IT, computer, quick things, etc. People who are very mercurial, they can be skinny if they don't have other qualities to them, usually very thin, or they can be kind of fat, but like small armed fat, and they look a little androgynous, or they don't look especially masculine or especially feminine. They look you know, very nerdy, I guess you would say, probably weak in body but if you have someone who's mercurial that trains physically they can be very quick you know, the idea of the rogue 
the thief, the rogue, these are all relating archetypes. And mercurial people are very smart. They're very good at mathematics and science and um, all that kind of stuff. They're very quick. They're good at you know delivery, delivery work, computer work, uh, teaching to an extent. Jupiterian can be related to the teaching role as well. I'm not sure what in the body Jupiter is, if it's like the tendons or something. I'm not, I really don't actually know. Mercury, of course, is a nervous system, as you would assume. Yeah, I think that's about it. Wrap that up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and got something out of that and it helps you in your own thoughts. Of course, feel free to check the links in the description for social commercial stuff. And have a nice day.